Welcome back to What's Next Garage. Today we get to take multiple tries at installing the oil pump and multiple tries at getting the heads on. Stick around, enjoy the show. One of these has two little notches in there. I don't know what that's for. Well, there's a key right there. It's kind of funny how I did have it on correctly the first time and even verified with the mirror but decided to pull it off again. The problem is that that gyrotor type pump inside there has to have all of the elements lined up. And if they're not lined up, well, it won't go in. And here's a perfect example of it not going in, no matter how I rotate it. So once I do finally get it in, get the bolt started, then I go and get my cordless ratchet and speed the installation process. Then I torque them down and move on to the next step. One thing I want to do is look at the alignment of the lobes. Good to go. They have a flat, so there's flats on it, and there's two flats on, on the lifter. So we're just gonna take the flats and do what everybody says, line the flats up, because it won't go any other way, and put them in. Once you get the hang of it, installing the lifters into the lifters' baskets is very routine and very simple work. The problem is trying not to break the mason jar full of oil. After I get all the lifters in, I add a little bit more of the Lucas assembly lube just to give them a fighting chance once we go to, once we go to crank up the engine. Installing the lifters and the lifter basket assemblies are pretty easy. Just kind of line them up and then wiggle them back and forth and they will slowly drop right in. No need to force anything at all. Then you just run in the bolt to retain the keepers in place. Each one has a single bolt. Spin them in and torque them down. Also on this head, I need to take off that sensor. That's what happens when you don't take the spark plugs out. And you can see there's a little bit of a chunk of hangers on there. For the most part, they're pretty clean, but I'm gonna get a pick and then we'll, we'll get that scraped out of there. In there. Now I'll just hit that with an air hose to get that out of there and then I'll go through the other ones and look. The bolt holes for the rocker perches get a little bit of a burr on them when they open them up during the porting and polishing process. So here we're just adding on the extras, the accessories, and we find a hole that needs to get tapped. Those tapped holes catch a little burr from the machining process. Not a big deal, you just chase the threads and you're good to go. Okay, so the temperature sensor, it's, it looks like a straight thread with a copper, with a copper washer to seal it. Let me just polish this up a little bit. Make it look shiny. At this point, I just add a little bit of pipe sealant on there 
That way I can be certain that it won't leak. One last thing I want to verify is there's a YouTuber out there that did this and actually got sent the wrong head. So the valves were actually hitting the cylinder deck or the, the, the block deck. So I want to use, and unfortunately this is what happens to your dial indicators when you have young kids that are learning to use precision measuring equipment. So, and now I have to go to my, my Harbor Freight backup. So I'm just basically going across here and across here and they're, per they're it's exactly the same so I'm just going inside the valve chamber measuring that and then I'm coming back across and it's the same so we're good to go not that I had any not that I had any doubts with um, the help that late model throttle gave me in putting together this package for me but it's just a verification step. Doing one final wipe down just to make sure all of the sealing surfaces are clean, burr free, and ready for the head gaskets. So the gaskets work on either side, just need to orientate them properly and drop them onto the pinholes and that's, that's that. Now we lay our head on there and then hopefully the, I've got it on wrong. Look at that, jeepers Christmas. There's the front, I had it on wrong. Wow, I need to pay attention. I was worried about that O2 sensor on this exhaust manifold and I've got to push to the side. But always verify, double check, triple check, especially if you have a difficult time concentrating. I tend to double do this thing. It took me a couple stabs at this stupid timing chain to get that right. I don't want to take two tries at this. The torque sequence on the heads is 22 foot-pounds for these, and then 90 degrees, and then 70 degrees. We will definitely talk about this tool later on in a different video. So, like everybody says, when you're going to torque these bolts down, you want to have engine oil on them. So I just put a little bit of engine oil on each one and prepared them for the torquing process. I'm gonna try and figure out why that was got so tight down there. Okay, it looks clear. Doesn't look like anything's out of control. I don't have an 11 millimeter tap, so I ground a groove. I didn't mess with the front lead, so I know it's gonna be in there. And I just got that much. And I'll run it in really slow with this guy. <sighs> so they say to do this before you put the heads on and god darn it, I agree. Like a numbskull. I always freaking got to do things twice.
So we'll speed through the chasing process, making sure that all of the bolt holes are free of debris, clear of coolant and oil, and ready to get new, fresh, clean bolts. A little bit of oil will be applied when we do finally put the heads back on. video we should be getting the heads on getting them torqued down and probably getting the push rods and rockers assemblies put in until that time thanks for watching what's next garage and stay tuned for the next episode have a great day